and I'll do the introductions and warm welcome to everyone on the call. So um, our Dr. Barbara Polivka, who needs no introduction, is Professor and Shirley B. Powers Endowed Chair of Nursing Research at the University of Louisville School of Nursing. She earned her bachelor's and master's degree in nursing from the University of Cincinnati and PhD in nursing from The Ohio State University. Her research interests focus on environmental health, including lead poisoning prevention, poison prevention and healthy homes, home health care worker health and safety, and the impact of the home environment on asthma as exacerbation. She's currently the PI on a NIOSH funded study to develop, test, and evaluate a virtual SIM training system to train home health care professionals in the identification of, assessment of, and response to health and safety hazards in the home. She's also the PI on a National Institute of Aging study focused on asthma and asthma triggers in older adults. She has multiple publications in nursing and interdisciplinary journals and has presented at national, regional, and local conferences on these topics. Dr. Rosemary Chowdhury, welcome, earned her graduate degrees uh, from The Ohio State University. So that's a PhD, MPH, and MHA. MHA. She has uh, served as a nursing instructor and as a community health specialist in the Delaware General Health District, where she was the accreditation coordinator for the MAP coordinator, for the MAP coordinator before her retirement in 2014. Most of her time is spent in public health advocacy and environmental health on topics such as climate change, air, water, chemicals, built environment, lead poisoning, and environmental justice, and public health, equity, and social justice. She's part of advocacy efforts through numerous agencies, such as the Alliance of Nurses for Healthy Environments, the Ohio P Public Health Association, the Ohio Environmental Council, Ohio Healthy Homes Network, and the League of Women Voters. She is a Climate Reality Project leader as well. She is OPHA's representative to the APHA Governing Council and is a former member of the Ohio Public Health Council, Ohio Public Health Advisory Board, and her County Board of Health. We're so pleased that you're presenting today on research priorities for public health nursing that was recently published. Thank you. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead. Thanks, Jessica, I appreciate that. Um, Rosemary, my slide, just so you know, because I didn't get a chance to send you these slides ahead of time, um, are really on the results, but please jump in and add the PHN content on this. Okay. Um, all right. So um, let me guys give you a little background. Um, I started looking into what um, we've done in environmental health nursing research uh, a couple years ago when I was asked to do a keynote presentation at a, a local conference. Um, and I, it was mainly to undergrads, um, but it was also to community members. And so I wanted to sort of give them an overview of flavor of, of the breadth of environmental health nursing research um, that has been done. So I started this scoping review, um, and it grew into this major project, and then Rosemary was kind enough to come in on this and help with this and provide a public health nursing perspective as well as um, you know, looking at the results and what we got and how we, what we mean, what we, what, what do we do with all this? Um, so we were published online in November and actually um, the hard copy of the journal just came out this week. So um, it is officially uh, published. So we're excited about that. So it was a long road. Um, so I'm going to move on hopefully with the slides. Of course, oh, there we go. So um, this is a scoping review, and a scoping review is an overview. It's not um, a, a systematic review as such. It's really just an overview of what is going on in published nursing research. Um, and we chose to go from 1995 to 2015, so that 20 year, and that's inclusive, 20 year period. Um, and um, so going down. Um, this was actually building a bit on the IOM report and uh, that was done that did an overview and they found 14 articles um, prior to 1995 that were environmental health nursing research um, and also built on Pat Grady et al's um, uh, Sentinel document that uh, encouraged and, and looked at the whole issue of environmental health nursing research. Um, so what we did was look at a CINAHL, and I chose just to keep it to CINAHL, knowing that that was not the end-all, be-all, um, but we had to keep it focused in some way, um, and the rationale was that most nursing research journals are in CINAHL. 
Um, so we did um, search on 32 different keywords, um, and if you've got the slides, you see them, and they are listed in the article. So you can look at them, and, and literally there, I thought it was pretty broad. I think you know we hit almost everything out there. Um, it's hard to tell for sure, but I think we did. Everything from air quality, air pollution, chemicals, environmental, environmental justice, environmental monitoring, environmental risk, um, and et cetera. So, and it, it, it's all alphabetical ends in water quality. So it was a huge um, list of words, keywords that were searched on. Um, started with a basic CINAHL search, um, and then searched each one of these keywords. Um, and then actually with the journals that were identified, um, my last search was going through each one of the journals and searching for each one of these keywords. So I'm pretty comfortable that we have the majority, vast majority of articles that were published in nursing journals. So our inclusion criteria are that they were published between 95 and 2015 in a peer-reviewed nursing journal. Um, it had to include an abstract and text, and I had to be able to get those things. So um, we were able to do that. And I have a really good interlibrary loan department here, so I was able to get almost everything. Um, it had to address environmental health. It had to be in English. I had to, couldn't translate. Uh, at least one author had to be a nurse, and I looked at that to make sure, and it had to be database. We did exclude concept analyses and lit reviews. There are some out there, they were excluded from this. However, systematic reviews were included. So I ended up, I started out, or we total had it, over 1,700 citations. They are in an EndNote file if anybody wants to see them all. Um, over 1,162 um, 1, were deleted because they didn't meet the criteria. Um, we, they included only an abstract, couldn't get the text, and um, there were duplicates. So we ended up with 548 studies that were reviewed for this scoping review. And probably, I imagine several of you, oh, Beth Shank just joined us. Thank you, Beth. Good to have you. We reviewed this article because I know it went, it went out to eight reviewers um, before it was finally accepted um, and many iterations. So thank you to all of you who reviewed. I know many, many of you did because I gave your names. So. <laughs> Oh, you um, told us under the pod. <laughs> I don't know who did what, but I did, you know, they asked for names, so a lot of you all were in that group. Um, so citations, we downloaded everything to Microsoft Excel. They were coded for year of publication, um, journal type, country of focus, the focus area, the priority population or site, and the study design. So that's how they were um, categorized. Um, so uh, if the abstract didn't include the required information, I did look at the text, um, but most of the information was in most abstracts. 20% uh, of the um, sample was randomly selected and recoded, and no real discrepancies, no discrepancies were identified. So what do we find? Um, if you don't have the slides in front of you, I'm sorry, you can pull up the article. It's all the results are in there. What I'm showing is the graph um, that shows when, uh, the number of articles that were published by year from 95 to 2015. Um, and we started in 1995, there were nine articles published. In 2014, there were 50, and also 2013, there were 50. Um, so we see an increase. We had a blip in 2002 with more articles. If you look at the graph, you see that. Um, that could be, you know, we speculated that could be a result of 9-11. It could be other things, um, exactly what was going on. It's unclear, but there was a blip, an increase in 2002. But otherwise, there's been a fairly steady increase um, through the years of number of articles published. And again, these are nursing journals. And these are one of the clear limitations of the study or of what the, the, this review is that we did not include um, articles, studies that were published outside of nursing journals. It just had to make that differentiation, um, fully recognizing that all of us publish in other journals. Um, but we also recognize that most of us publish in nursing journals as well. Um, so we figured we at least get, again, this is a scoping review, so we at least get a good idea of what's going on. Um, 
So um, what did we find? When we looked at the kinds of journals where they were published, there were 118 different nursing journals. And I have that list if anybody wants to know where they are. And also, um, there is a supplement to the article that lists all 538 articles, so you can see exactly who was included. I think about everybody on this call was included. Um, so most of the um, publications were in the specialty journals. For example, PHN was, had the most articles, 59. Um, Workplace Health and Safety, which is the AAOHN journal, they switched names, um, was second with 49. Um, where there were 35 journals that had five plus articles, 24 that had three to four articles, and 59 journals that had one to two articles. So, you know, there are certainly journals that publish more environmental health um, related um, research than others. When we looked at um, the region or country of focus, um, most of the articles were um, in the U.S. They were U.S.-focused populations. That was 63%. And then the others were in 33 other countries. Um, Asian countries were the next most common place where articles were published. It was about 17%, followed by Europe, 7%. Oceania, 4%. South America, Caribbean, 3%. The Middle East, about 2 And Africa, about 1%. Um, so what we did see, and I'll show that, that later, talk about it a little bit later, is we're seeing more um, environmental health focused research in other countries increasing over the last few years. So it's, it's becoming more of a, a common topic, but still the majority of research is occurring in the U.S., which is not surprising. Um, so categorizing by topic was, was a bit of a challenge. Um, and um, we do know that many of the articles had more than one tar you know, sort of focus area, um, but the majority you know, sort of had to make a decision as to what was the primary focus. So the primary fo foci of the journal, uh, of the research, was either disaster, disaster preparedness, OC health, or home environment. Um, and then that was followed by a number of other things like other foci such as environmental exposures, risk perception, secondhand smoke, um, environmental health education, environmental health assessment, environmental health knowledge. Um, we only had six articles in the nursing journals that were climate change, um, five that were environmental risk reduction, four sustainability, and only one on risk communication that was clearly that was the major focus. Um, when we t looked at who was the um, primary pop tar sort of priority population, um, there we were able to categorize about 448 of these articles. Um, if the priority site, you know, population it really wasn't a population but a site or community, those were looked at separately. So when there was a priority population, the most common was either nurses or nursing students. About 40 percent of those 448. Um, articles were focused on nurses or nursing students. And we really didn't, I didn't think that was that surprising. Um, it's an easy population. And a lot of the OCH Health um, art studies are on nurses. And then we had other adults. Um, we had about 18% on kids and prenatal. Maybe about 7% on older adults. And other healthcare workers, about 5%. And then family. Clear family focus was only 2.5%. Um, the so there were 73 articles that were really the site was a community or a, a, a sort of a other site, not a not a population as such, but a, a, a physical site. Um, community was the most common there, um, or a hospital extended care facility was next, and then sort of grouped the country, region, or state. There were only three articles that focused on schools particularly on schools. So we looked at what is it that we're, people were um, studying with nurses and nursing students. The most common um, foci, fo focus of the studies, was disaster, disaster preparedness, and OCH health. Um, when it was adults, it was OCH health and disaster preparedness. You notice those common things. Older adults, home environment. Um, for kids, it was home environment or exposures, and then some on these disasters. For family, there was, again, disaster and home environment. 
and then healthcare workers, non-nurses, it was Oc Health. Okay. Um, so the focus of the studies that were on community or region were environmental risk perception, disaster preparedness, or environmental exposures. And I mentioned that only three were school environment. All right, so the design. Um, looked at what was the primary design. 42% were cross-sectional. So we're doing a lot of one-time only things. Um, we had about 20% were qualitative, and then 14% were either experimental or quasi-experimental, and it went down from there. Mixed methods, 5%. We had 27 systematic reviews, which was very interesting, I thought, um, that there were that many systematic reviews. That was actually, I think, promising. Um, secondary analysis of data was about 3%. We had about 3% instrument development, about 3% prospective longitudinal types of studies. 2% retrospective and a few others thrown in there. Um, but we're still doing the majority of our studies are cross-sectional, qualitative, um, and not as much intervention. All right, the systematic reviews, I said we had about 5%. The major topics were disaster preparedness. We had some on pesticides hazard communication, preterm births, and high environmental temperatures, needle stick injuries, and volatile um, anesthetics. So those were some of the topics uh, in the systematic reviews. The instrument development, um, there were 16 studies that did look at instrument development, and some of their topics were falls risk, disaster preparedness, environmental engagement, radon awareness, and uh, environmental awareness just to give you an idea of some of the topics. All right, so that's kind of the over, that's a quick overview of what we did. Again, the specifics are in the, uh, the article. But just to give you a, a discussion, and I'm going to pull Rosemary in here in a minute. So Rosemary, if you want to get off mute. Um, but we had, um, again, a, you know, there were only 14 studies, as I mentioned before, in the IOM uh, when they looked at for between 1900 and 94, whereas we had 548 in that 20-year period. So we saw a major increase in the number. Um, and why? Well, it might be related to the increased attention of the environmental health nursing, in schol uh, nursing scholarship. might be related to the Grady et al. article highlighting NINR's um, interest in this area, funding uh, available from federal agencies and from specialty organizations. Um, there was a change in the focus. Those 14 articles were really OCH health focused. And um, the ones we did, as I mentioned, where disaster preparedness was the most common, um, followed by OCH Health and the home environment. There were not really any studies. 1% were climate change. Again, this is what's published in the nursing literature, and very few on sustainability, limited on families, schools, and healthcare uh, facilities. And I said, as I mentioned, a lot cross-sectional, not as many intervention studies. Um, so limitations, um, we know we've underestimated the number of environmental health nursing research that's going on because we were limited to nursing journals in CINAHL. Um, so doing this uh, at a broader, you know, looking at non-nursing journals would also um, be valuable, I think. You know, it's very possible that things were misclassified in terms of focus group priority population and study design. Um, and we could have missed some search terms. We did 32, as I said, but we could have missed some. Um, so we know that we've increased how much nursing, environmental health nursing research is going on. Um, and I think this does really reemphasize our longstanding recognition of the importance of environment and health outcomes. And now I'm going to turn it over to Rosemary to talk about the importance in public health nursing and your thoughts, Rosemary. That's kind of my overview, but I want to give you a chance. Okay, so I I don't know how many people on the line are public health by specialty. Um, and let me go back first to something Barb said right at the get-go when she said, uh, I think she said she was honored that I decided to join. That's actually the other way around. I was honored that she asked me to join. Anytime you get to work with Barb, it's, um, 
it's an honor. It's enlightening. And so I, I had to clarify that, Barb, but thanks for the kind words. So um, I, you know, when Barb and I work, we, we follow the same format a lot. There are areas that each of us are stronger in, and certainly she's a whiz in um, quantitative, and, you know, quantitative and qualitative analysis. Um, but I don't even have access to um, uh, a, a good platform for doing data analysis anymore. So I, I, my area of contribution, the one I'm more interested in at least, um, to discuss right now is trying to ground this article in um, a context that makes it of interest to people who will read this article in public health nursing. So I specifically really tried um, and ran this by Barb and she said, yeah, you know, that's good. You know, let's, let's go that way to ground this work in um, the relevance to practice, but also in the relevance to the definition of public health nursing the one that has come out just recently, and in the ethical obligation um, that was uh, addressed in some in some uh, level in the Pope et al. 1995, and and I'm sure you're all familiar with that, the you know nursing health and the environment study or task force report. But to to pull from that, which is an early nod to the importance, the ethical and advocacy link with nurses' involvement in environmental health research. So I tried to put that kind of content in so the article would mean um, more to the reader, certainly the the, uh, descriptive content about where we are and where we need to go and where we haven't gone yet, things like that is important. But I really wanted to try and give it some context in the the need to get more nurses involved in advocacy. And I see Peggy Berry's on the line and she she can speak along with me too. I, I don't know about you all, but in Ohio, we don't see as much nursing advocacy as we would like and certainly not as much as we would need in our state. Um, we need a lot of nursing advocacy. So pulling that kind of content in was um, delightful for me and really important. So I did want to add that. Um, and I think I would agree with what Barb said about limitations. And we had an article published on, um, uh, a a little theoretical work that came from a CBPR study and and we didn't even get in (laughs) the, um, articles that were reviewed. So I would echo that, but I think, um, you know, it was, it was, I think it's a good contribution because again, it's not a, um, you know, a review of the quality of the studies, but a good description of where we are in environmental health nursing in in the research realm and where we need to go. And and the the small number of um, articles on climate change and on sustainability and on family was disappointing. I I know it's important to study nursing, but, you know, how long are we going to study nursing and nursing students? I think we need to get into interventions and more experimental or at least quasi-experimental design. And and the findings show that. So unless there's anything else you want me to address, Barb, I'm curious to hear what people think. Yeah, I'm I'm too. Thanks, Rosemary. Um, So we're open for questions, discussion, thoughts on this. I don't know if anybody else has seen the article yet, but um, what do you think? Hi, this is Laura. I would agree with Mary's summary that we're really good at but we really need to move um, to be important players in environmental uh, health research so uh, I think that alone is important finding Laura you kind of faded there can you repeat like what you thought can you repeat the gist of that um, can you hear me? <laughs> Sounds yeah, good now. Better. Oh, okay. So I, I just was reinforcing and supporting what Rosemary said, that uh, as a profession, nurses tend to be really good at navel-gazing, but um, we, we, um, I think we have the capacity and the skills to be uh, players within this, this uh, area of research. And... Um, I think it's uh, your work is an inco- important contribution to moving us forward in that direction. Thanks. 
Can I just... We're open a lot of thoughts. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. This this is Beth Shank, and uh, happy to join you all today. I usually miss these meetings, but great conversation and uh, great paper. I love the fact that you're tracking uh, nursing contributions in science in this area. And what it brings up for me, um, again, is the uh, gap uh, in terms of n n there not being a specific environmental health nursing journal. Now, Laura and I have talked about that. Barb and I have talked about that a little bit. So I'm just launching that again. Not that any of us <laughs> have <you>. time. <laughs> <laughs> I love you. <laughs> I think it would help consolidate uh, and, you know, the science. I, I agree. Think you're right. um, I agree. I agree. Pat Kelly was going to be on. I don't think as Pat's gotten on, but she was going to advocate more in public health nursing. Um, you know, I don't know where that might go, but um, but I, you know, it'd be great. Actually, I'm not. this. This is Rosemary. I have to say, I'm ashamed we didn't think to put that in the discussion, <laughs> Barb. Uh, but that's that's an excellent well, uh, point. Well, and we're we're taking baby steps with the AJN mm. column. So I think once right. we, you know, master that, I think we'll have a lot of us learned to really better at, you know, developing a platform for our own DH. But I think there's there's probably quite a bit that we're learning along the way. Um, what I press what they want to publish, down to who's a good writer and how do we keep people above committed on the, you know, on the docket, things like that as well, management stuff. Yeah. This is Robin. I have two thoughts. Um, is it we want to just have all of them? Boy, I... You're Fabulous. cutting out a lot for me. This is Rosemary. Are other people having trouble hearing, Robin? Yeah. Yeah. Um, I have a little um, triangle with the oh, it's my internet. <laughs> oh, okay. So, um, can you hear me better now? Yes. yes. Yeah. Okay. I just lost my internet connection. Um, two thoughts. Um, there are some that say we should have all of the environmental health nursing information all in one place and um, to really in, attract environmental health or nurses to environmental health. But there's also those of us that think we need to disseminate this where just regular nurses via whatever or whatever specialty there are in whatever practice they happen to choose, we can be disseminating it out. So that we can have us do again. Hello, uh, this is just this is oh. Jessica. Robin, perhaps consider using the chat function. And okay, let me go I, ahead. Okay. Let me go ahead and read uh, what we have in the chat function currently. Um, this is from uh, Sean V. Sean Mitchell. Having nursing research and articles in other journals, I think, facilitates sharing nursing expertise with other disciplines. Journals are very time, uh, time and financial ex intensive to start and maintain. And if I, I'd like to put out there too. So this is Jessica just uh, sharing some thoughts. Oh, and Robin said that's my first point. Okay, good. So um, we'll have folks put your phone, put, if you'll go on mute if you aren't speaking. Um, the other is to association journals are often helped. They're run by association fees and have a different bent. And I know Annie's revisiting its identity and strategic plan. So it's something to think about as part of that. But another strategy too is to take an assessment as to who's a strong advocate and who publishes well, who sits on an editorial board in some type of environmental focused journal and see if there can't be a solicitation in a particular section devoted to environmental health nursing. An example is I subscribe to some interdisciplinary journals 
and they have an asthma section, a COPD section, an epidemiology section. So some of these disciplinaries to, to try to motivate that influence, they have relatively good impactors already off the ground, something to consider. This is Beth. I just want to throw out one more thing, and, and I'm not really lobbying for the journal because I certainly don't have time to do it, but it just seems like it's a bit of a gap, and I, I do understand those points about complexity, workload, uh, lack of expertise, and finances because we have looked into it. However, for our my, my organization, the hospital system I work for, we are joining a digital commons, and it is a terrific platform for sharing um, anything that's been published, abstracts, posters, et cetera. And we need that for ourselves because we're 40,000 nurses and this is broader than nursing. But one of the other things that you can do is, is create a journal that's um, of a different sort. It's not necessarily open access, but, it's, but it could be. It, you could charge for articles or you don't have to, but it's, it's uh, it looks like substantially less work. So just so you know, I'm looking into that over the next couple of years for our organization, and I'll just um, keep you all informed at some point about if that seems, you know, something of interest. So this is Rosemary. Uh, two thoughts um, to the last speaker. I, I hear what you're saying. Whoops, I don't know what that was. So not being in academia anymore, um, I still recall the importance of impact factor. And so, you know, I don't know how well different types of journals score in impact factor, but I know that's a key thing when you're doing your annual review. Um, the other thing is, I wonder, I wonder how much of the, how many of the studies, oh my goodness, I don't know why it's flashing back. How many of the studies were um, uh, interdisciplinary and like I know Barb focuses a lot now on interdisciplinary research more than maybe in, in the past, but um, you know, to what extent that drives the, the readership and dare I even say the rigor, because if you look at our review, the, the level of the, um, you know, how high the studies overall went on that ladder uh, going, working from the very bottom all the way up to um, clinical trial, uh, you know, experimental, my goodness, I'm blanking here. I think that's part of the problem that, you know, the, the publishing of articles that are not strong methodologically or strong in, in terms of being predictive in the scientific world. I think, um, like I think of nursing research. I don't know how much environmental health related research gets published in a journal like that, which is a pretty credible one in, in nursing. Um, not that I'm saying anything bad about the other journals, but my point is, as the level of rigor goes up, maybe the um, the recognition as being in other more credible research journals would come. I, I, I don't know. Just throwing some thoughts out there. Not trying to be pejorative at all for any researchers out there, but... I, I also it. think, Rosemary, this is Laura, that... Um and Robin brings up a good point, too, is that, um, you know, if we're looking to be players um, and have our research read, um, I think there is a lot to be said about interdisciplinary work, but also publishing in non-nursing journals. Um, I can tell you, uh, my experience with nursing research is one example in the past particularly around epidemiological studies, forget about environmental health, has not been a good one. Now, I don't know, somebody else on the phone call might have had a better experience, but um, I think that as we look at um, the importance of transdisciplinary and interdisciplinary work, that it would be interesting to note how many articles are published outside of the the nursing uh, literature as well. And I know this call is really around CINAHL, but um, I think if we're honest with what it's gonna take to fix what's wrong in our environment, um, it's gonna be more than nurses. So I, um, I agree, I think we, I, I, I think impact factor is, 
you know, it can be important for promotion and tenure, but, you know, if if it's free, more people are willing to read it. So, uh, you know, there's a lot of factors that goes go into it, a decision. But I, I really think that if we're publishing in non-nursing journals, we may actually get more traction. This is Jessica. I uh, just want to read Robin's point. Uh, she says, also nurses need to make it very apparent they are a nurse when writing and publishing. Often an author might be a nurse, but also have a doctorate um, and only list the academic degree and perhaps not the RN if it's outside. Um, and just so this is my own point in response to Laura, I think we're at such an exciting time right now. Um, and nursing research has a new editor in chief. I know Rhino was was looking for, or maybe soon naming a new editor and chief. And these are some of our high impact research based journals. So perhaps now is a fantastic time for those who have you know connections and influence to to make those suggestions in those journals. So I'm gonna this is Barb. I'm gonna respond to Laura. I, I don't disagree that we need to publish in interdisciplinary, and I do, and I know most of us do. But I also feel that we need to strongly publish in nursing journals so that the audience of nurses who primarily, you know, clinical nurses read a lot of nursing journals um, so that they get it. Um, I think, you know, like, for example, the Oc Health Journal, Workplace Health and Safety, has actually moved into an interdisciplinary focus, and a lot of their authors um, are interdisciplinary because I did there were a lot of articles in that journal I didn't include um, in this review because there was no nursing author, and I went and um, literally Googled everybody to make sure there wasn't. If there, you know, if I was worried, so you know, that kind of a journal is is really good because you're hitting the occupational health um, workers in broadly, um, but it is primarily a nursing journal because it's the journal of the American Association of Occupational Health Nurses. Similarly, PHN. So. I think there's a, a need for both. We want to hit our audience as well so that they understand that environmental health research findings impact their practice and their clients and their quality of care. So I think we need to do both. That's sort of my two cents on that. Yeah, I agree. I, I think, uh, I think uh, one dimensional is not going to get us where we need to be for sure. Well, and, and so this is Rosemary hearing what both Barb and Laura said. Oh, good grief, I apologize. Let me shut that off. <laughs> um, I, I had two phones here. My, anyway, um, you know, but I think the benefit that Laura said about interdisciplinary work means that your research, your name will get out in the journal. You know, you usually publish in more than one journal when you have an interdisciplinary team. So it gives a chance to get a nurse out in other journals. And then there's still usually a place or places in nursing research to take the results and maybe, you know, to talk about it from a nursing perspective, talking about the particular intervention or, or whichever article is saved for the nursing world that can inform practice. Yeah. And I think that's yeah, really important. Right. Yeah. I, I, you know, that's why we, we tried to really link this work and grounded a little bit, even in the scope and standards, the professional standards, you know, the definition, as I said, so that it, it, it resonates practice applications, practice grounding. Yeah. So thinking about what, what's the next thing, what, what should be, we, what should nurses be doing in environmental health nursing research? Sort of what are our priorities? We've identified and some of the things we threw out that we're not, clear in this review were um, studies related to climate change, sustainability. Um, we didn't see much in schools, and I reviewed, you know, journal of school nursing. There's not much there on environmental health. Um, so, you know, are those areas, should it be more specific? What, what are people's thoughts after, you know, should it just be intervention study? I'm just throwing out a lot of things. What are some of the priorities um, that you all see um, or are thinking about? Uh, should it all be interdisciplinary? I'm just throwing out options. What do you think? Okay, I didn't mean to stop discussion. <laughs> so, Barb, 
I I think that um So I'm a public health person. So I, I think uh, multi and interdisciplinary um, tends to get better results. But there are situations where you're not going to necessarily have that opportunity. So, for example, um, you know, I did some research on the uh, air quality flag program, and I worked with a school nurse and. Um, it was uh, a partnership that was quite important and successful, but it, there was no interdisciplinary team. It was really um, the hard work of the school nurse that worked with the, the principal and the teachers and the, the parents and, and such. Uh, so in that way, I guess it was sort of interdisciplinary, but um, I think there are opportunities that present themselves where we're not always going to have that, um, and particularly if we're piloting something. Um, but but I think that, um, I think your article does a, a wonderful job of sort of shining a, a light on what we're doing well and those things that we could improve. And, um, you know, maybe this group comes up with, you know, a list of recommendations moving forward. Um, I guess I don't want to pigeonhole us into one or the other because I think it really all depends. I, so this is, this is, comment. Yeah, yeah, go ahead. So let me read. Mm -hmm. It says, um, I don't think there's any way that it cannot be interdisciplinary with nurses coordinating, of course. Of course. Go ahead, Rosemary. I was just going to say, I, I think um, the, the, that schools are a huge focus for environmental issues. And in particular, I, I think to, um, I'm not sure, I know this might not be the kind of design that um, would be easy to bring up to that higher level of rigor, though it could somehow, but a, a community-based participatory research um, involvement in, in school to try and invest um, parents, teachers, and depending what level of school you're at, maybe even students, uh, I think that's really important because schools, you know, we know hotbeds of um, unhealthy environments. So not all, but many. Well, and I think just... that the one last thing, the, the, the lack of focus on climate change is frightening, very frightening to me. And that's it for me. So Robin also put in, you know, there's no way it can't be interdisciplinary. Oh, I'm sorry, Barb already read this in about childcare and Head Starts. So just want to incorporate Robin's comments into the conversation. And from from my perspective, what I was trained in, um, and sort of that unique niche that NINR fits into and defines as uniquely nursing, is the symptom portion. And that this symptom response, uh, of course, that's you know tied to a diagnosis or a clinical disease in some cases, but the symptom management, the symptom response, the symptom clusters and identification. So I think that's that you know that wasn't something directly addressed by this review, but a priority that nurse scientists are trained in. Um, and then also, you know, we have some fantastic methods that have developed out of the discipline looking at family systems. And so it's interesting that that's a gap because that is that is something that nurses are trained and a lot of us are cross trained. You know, I had a lot of cross training in epidemiology. And so how, you know, how do we want to pull in? Is it a method we want to focus on? Is it a setting in a population? Is it a particular, you know, like like what an INR has done with a symptom focus or a particular disease concern? It's an interesting conversation to have. Uh, this is Laura again. I agree. Um... I'm just re realizing that um, this might be informative for this conversation. I um, So I work at Georgetown, and we have something called the uh, Georgetown Environment Initiative. And um, they have a partnership with the University of Maryland. Um, it's a very long name. It's succinct, the socio-environmental, I don't know, center. <laughs> anyway. Um, I was 
approached it to see if I wanted to hire a postdoc for my work in climate and health. And of course I said yes. And um, of the eight applicants, two of them are nurses. And so um, I was I was stunned and delighted uh, because my work really focuses on climate change and health, and it's specifically uh, respiratory disease and uh, air pollutants. And these folks are um, are uh, trained in modeling, geospatial uh, data gathering, et cetera. So I think that we're beginning to see, I mean, I was really stunned. I expected zero nurses, and I actually didn't expect too many people to apply because it's such a narrow field of research. But I think that, um, you know, for folks that like these applicants, if we can groom them and bring them on board, um, they might actually be able to inform this conversation a bit, too, as far as publishing and um, where they got their interest and how, um, you know, they see uh, we might be able to advance the profession. I'm thrilled to hear you've gotten a couple of nurse applicants. That's great, Laura. I was stunned, That's really. Awesome. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but yeah, invite them to uh, our research work group, please. Yeah, I, I had a call this week from someone I met at a um, a nursing conference, uh, and she is interested in dementia and environmental exposures. And so I did invite her to the call today, but uh, I got a late email that she was uh, not able to attend. But I, I don't know if there's anything else we can do to encourage folks in a way that, you know, it's 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 it might be the time, it might be if she's working on her dissertation. I don't know what it is, but it, it'd be great to get some of the the emerging uh, scientists who have already figured out that environmental health is their thing um, to, you know, get them part, to be part of this group. We have a few, um, Jessica's one, Azita, you know, Robin, um, right. a few others are not all, but yeah, the more the better, I agree. Um, and their thoughts on, on where we should focus, I think, um, we're right at the uh, 359 mark, so we need to wind up. Correct, Jessica? Is that correct? Unmuted. Yes, I'm sorry. I had myself on mute. Please do note that there is an electronic link in the invitation and submit your ideas for what research priorities should be. You know, even if it's past documentation and past work, we want to base a lot of what we're doing. We've, we've heard as we've gone to different conferences, uh, different people's work, I heard Pat Butterfield had done some work. So point us in those directions, give us some suggestions, but please do fill that out by next month's meeting. I think we put down February 19th as the due date for that so we can have something put together. And we have pre-conference workshops scheduled for SNRS and MNRS. So please do sign up and spread the word. Um, That's great. And absolutely. So, and thank you so much again, Barb and Rosemary. This was so informative and what a robust discussion and some food for thought about how we can support one another and enhance the rigor and, and move in a, in a really positive coordinated direction. So I thank you, and we will send out an email invite and hope to see you in again four weeks. Thank you. Bye, everyone. Bye. Appreciate it. Bye-bye right. now.